Welcome to Perfecting the Saints. I'm John Eckhart, the pastor of Crusaders Church of Chicago, welcoming all of our first-time viewers and those who tune us in each week at the same time for the next half hour of teaching and information and revelation on the subjects of deliverance and spiritual warfare. And we're so excited about so many people responding to our book and tape offers. And for those who've been watching us recently, we've been dealing on the subject of rejection, one of the most important areas that every believer needs to confront and understand how to be delivered from the demon of rejection and other spirits that come in with rejection. Uh, we have found in the years of being involved in deliverance ministry that rejection is a doorkeeper or a door opener for many other spirits to enter. We've talked about schizophrenia in the past, how it begins with rejection and how it opens the door for the spirit of rebellion, how the enemy sets up a dual personality in an individual, causing them to become double-minded. We've talked about how rejection can come in uh, through the mother's womb and how a person can be rejected early in life. And often the enemy uh, appears to be so successful in getting people rejected, which opens the door for many other problems, addictions, rebellion, bitterness, stubbornness, anger, hatred, revenge. These are all spirits that work with the demon or the spirit of rejection. And many of you have been writing us and requesting the materials that we're offering, and we're going to give you a chance to, to get more information on our, our book offers for this uh, teaching. But I want to also, in this program, uh, pray some warfare prayers that we were praying from our, our new prayer book called Prayers That Route Demons. Uh, it is our best-selling book now. We have thousands of people that are writing and requesting uh, this particular book, and it, it will be a tremendous blessing for your uh, life if you'll get these prayers and begin to pray them. Um, we have so many different prayers that we pray uh, in, this, in this book called Prayers That Route Demons. I want to give you some of the things that we pray. Prayers releasing the fire of God. Prayers to command the morning, the day, and the night. Prayers against Leviathan and marine spirits. Prayers against Satan. Prayers against Jezebel. Prayers to overcome satanic and demonic conspiracies. Overcoming and dividing demonic confederacies. Quenching the fire of the enemy. Kingdom prayers and decrees. Apostolic prayers. Prayers for souls. Binding and loosing. Prayers for deliverance from evil. Disannulling ungodly covenants. Breaking curses and casting out generational spirits. Prayers for blessing and favor, prayers for self-deliverance, warfare prayers, rebuking the enemy, prayers of deliverance, prayers for angelic deliverance, prayers concerning the heavens, renunciations, prayers for prosperity and financial release, prayers for revelation, prayers for healing and health, breaking the power of schizophrenia and double-mindedness, breaking curses and releasing the blessings of God. Prayers over high places, prayers over gates, prayers against idols, prayers for enlargement and increase, speaking to mountains, prayers to release the arm of the Lord, prayers for divine safety and protection, releasing the power of God, releasing the power of the blood, prayers that destroy oppression, prayers against demonic princes, releasing the arrows of the Lord, Lord of the Lord, deliverance and renunciation of sexual sin, Prayers and decrees that break the powers of darkness, releasing the spoilers. Prayers are, uh, in, against and dealing with spirit birds, deliverance from serpents, deliverance from animalistic spirits. Prayers against queen spirits, prayers to root out, prayers against the spirit of destruction, closing breaches and hedges, destroying evil cauldrons, pots that deals with witchcraft, destroying yokes and removing burdens, dealing with spirits of the desert. Prayers against terrorism, releasing shame upon the enemy. And then we have a whole list of different confessions. And there are over 100 pages of warfare prayers and prayers of deliverance. And, and one of the things that we, we teach believers is if you're going to be successful in spiritual warfare, you must learn to use your biblical and spiritual authority as a believer. And one of the things that you do when you pray these prayers is that you're releasing your faith and you're releasing the authority and power that God has given you to begin to deal with the enemies, spiritual enemies that would uh, try to attack your life. And remember, the, the word of God says, whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven and whatever we loose on earth is loosed in heaven. 
Um, I want to pray some of the prayers and give you an example of some of these, these powerful prayers that you can pray for yourself. One of my favorite prayers, and we often pray these prayers when we're praying for people uh, for deliverance, especially when it comes to breaking generational curses and casting out generational spirits. You can pray these prayers directly for yourself, minister self-deliverance. You can pray them for other people that you're ministering deliverance to. But the, on page 22 of our prayer book, um, there's a, a section of prayers called Breaking Curses and Casting Out Generational Spirits. I am redeemed from the curse of the law, Galatians 3.13. That is the biblical basis of breaking curses, the fact that Jesus has redeemed us from the curse of the law. I break all generational curses of pride, lust, perversion, rebellion, witchcraft, idolatry, poverty, rejection, fear, confusion, addiction, death, and destruction in the name of Jesus. I command all generational spirits that came into my life through conception, in the womb, in the birth canal, and through the umbilical cord to come out in the name of Jesus. I break all spoken curses and negative words that I have, that have, that I have spoken over my life in the name of Jesus. These are what we call self-inflicted curses when people actually speak negative words concerning them, themselves. I break all spoken curses and negative words spoken over my life by others, including those in authority in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestral spirits of Freemasonry, idolatry, witchcraft, false religion, polygamy, lust, and perversion to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. I command all hereditary spirits of lust, rejection, fear, sickness, infirmity, disease, anger, hatred, confusion, failure, and poverty to come out of my life in the name of Jesus. I break the legal rights of all generational spirits operating behind a curse in the name of Jesus. You have no legal right to operate in my life. I bind and rebuke all familiar spirits and spirit guides that would try to operate in my life from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I renounce all false beliefs and philosophies inherited by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all curses on my finances from my ancestors, from any ancestors that cheated or mishandled money in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of sickness and disease and command all inherited sickness to leave my body in the name of Jesus. Through Jesus, my family is blessed, Genesis 12 and 3. I renounce all pride inherited from my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all oaths, vows, and pacts made with the devil by my ancestors in the name of Jesus. I break all curses by agents of Satan spoken against my life in, in secret in the name of Jesus, Psalm 10 and 7. I break all written curses that would affect my life in the name of Jesus, 2 Chronicles 34 and 24. I break every time-released curse that would activate in my life as I grow older in the name of Jesus. I break every curse of Balaam hired against my life in the name of Jesus. Lord, turn every curse spoken against my life into a blessing, Nehemiah 13 and 2. I break all generational rebellion that would cause me to resist the Holy Spirit, Acts 7 and 51. I break all curses of death spoken by people in authority in my nation, over my nation, in the name of Jesus. Now, we often pray this one because in many nations of the world, when they shout death to America, that is a spoken curse. They are literally releasing spirits of death and destruction against our nation. Remember, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. And so when they march in different, uh, different nations, uh, many of the, the radical, uh, fundamental Islamic uh, people are, are cursing America, shouting death to America. They're burning the American flag. They're burning effigies of the president or other leaders. Well, those, things, those curses need to be broken because those curses are spoken against our nation. I break curses of death spoken in America by people from other nations in the name of Jesus. Now let me pray some prayers that we pray for self-deliverance. You know, you can minister deliverance to yourself. Jesus talked about this when he said, uh, before you cast the, the, the beam out of your brother's eye, he said, cast out the moat from your own eye. 
And that word cast out is the same as the word that we use to cast out demons. It's, it's the Greek word ekbalo, which means to expel or eject. So there are things that we need to drive out our own, own lives before we can successfully minister to other people. I break all generational curses of pride, rebellion, lust, poverty, witchcraft, idolatry, death, destruction, failure, sickness, infirmity, fear, schizophrenia, and rejection in the name of Jesus. I command all generational and hereditary spirits operating in my life through curses to be bound and cast out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of lust, perversion, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, and immorality to come out of my sexual character in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of hurt, rejection, fear, anger, wrath, sadness, depression, discouragement, grief, bitterness, and unforgiveness to come out of my emotions in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of confusion, forgetfulness, mind control, mental illness, double-mindedness, fantasy, pain, pride, and memory recall to come out of my mind in the name of Jesus. I break all curses of schizophrenia, and I command all spirits of double-mindedness, rejection, rebellion, and root of bitterness to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of guilt, shame, and condemnation to come out of my conscience in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of pride, stubbornness, disobedience, rebellion, self-will, selfishness, and arrogance to come out of my will in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of addiction to come out of my appetite in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits of witchcraft, sorcery, divination, and occult to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my head, eyes, mouth, tongue, and throat to come out in the name of Jesus. Now, often when people begin to pray these prayers, they'll begin to get manifestations. They'll begin to feel things coming out. Sometimes they'll cough. Uh, sometimes they'll scream. They'll cry. Uh, we see many different manifestations when people are praying these kinds of prayers. I command all spirits operating in my chest and lungs to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my back and spine to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my stomach, navel, and abdomen to come out in the name of Jesus. Sometimes we, we place our hands on these parts of the body because different spirits can lodge in different parts of the body. I command all spirits operating in my heart, spleen, kidneys, liver, and pancreas to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my sexual organs to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my hands, arms, legs, and feet to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all demons operating in my skeletal system, including my bones, joints, knees, and elbows to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my glands and in my endocrine system to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my blood and circulatory system to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits operating in my, my muscles and muscular systems to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all religious spirits of doubt, unbelief, error, heresy, and tradition that came in through religion to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all spirits from my past that are hindering my present and future to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all ancestral spirits that entered through my ancestors to come out in the name of Jesus. I command all hidden spirits operating in any part of my life to come out in the name of Jesus. Now, when you begin to pray these prayers, you're covering every area of a person's life. And we have seen just tremendous deliverance that has come from praying these prayers for, for, for ourselves and praying them over other people. Our desire is to see people set free. And one of the, one of the demons that we, we have been talking about that is very common is the demon of rejection. And we have a, a special book offer uh, this month that will give you some material, including our prayer book that I'm praying from in this program. And I'll be praying some of these prayers in, in other programs that you can take advantage of. So stay tuned and here are our special offers. And I'll be back at, after the offer to conclude the teaching on spiritual warfare, deliverance, and dealing with the spirit of rejection. 
take full advantage of this extended book offer as we continue our deliverance series on rejection. With two great resources, order Prayers That Rout Demons for just $12 or Rejection, Its Roots and Its Fruits for your gift of $30. These books are offered separately. Call today at 1-866-265-9085 or write to the address on your screen. The book offer on, this, on the subject of rejection, I feel is one of the most important understandings and, and revelations that you can receive as a believer. If you don't understand the spirit of rejection, you'll not be able to minister to the majority of people that you minister to in the area of deliverance. I want to make this statement. It, it was made by uh, the, the Gibsons, who are uh, two pioneers in the area of deliverance, and they, they make this statement. Having prayed for believers of many nations, I have come to this conclusion. The greatest undiagnosed, therefore untreated malady within the body of Christ today is rejection. Rejection, whether active or passive, real or imaginary, robs Jesus Christ as his right, of his rightful lordship in the life of his children and robs them of the vitality and quality of life that Jesus intended. Uh, one of the areas that we deal with in deliverance is we often come against a demon that's called rejection from the womb. That there are people that have, have actually had a spirit of rejection come into them when they were in their mother's womb. Rejection uh, or the spirit of rejection may be received by the manner or timing of conception. Children conceived out of wedlock, in anger, as a result of rape, incest, adultery, or from a drug-dependent relationship will exhibit signs of rejection from birth onwards. Children born to parents who did not want them, who were a strain on the family budget, the last of a large family, and strangely, the middle child of a family often struggle with rejection. A woman receiving ministry in Switzerland says she had given birth to three children in three years. She was furious with her husband on the last occasion and resented the pregnancy greatly. The newborn baby refused to suckle or drink milk from a bottle while being held in her mother's arms. She would often drink from it as, as if, it was, if it was propped up on a pillow beside her in a carry cot. Even in adulthood, the rejection which began at conception, remained as a wall of hostility between mother and daughter. Reje uh, rejection may be received in the mother's womb. The circumstances surrounding a pregnant woman and her attitude to her unborn child influences the child in the womb. To a lesser degree, a father's displeasure or pleasure may be impressed upon a, a fetus, particularly if having been Having expressed strong preference for one sex, the child turns out to be the opposite. In other words, I want a son, but instead a daughter comes. Or I want a daughter, and instead a, a son is born. Here's an example. The father of a young married woman who came to us had rejected his wife in marriage. When the mother conceived against her will, she rejected her baby in utero. The child grew into adulthood with deep rejection and a hereditary unwillingness to conceive children. She determined to avoid childbirth and what she termed the headache and heartache. She also rejected her father-in-law because she felt he was trying to manipulate her husband because of his desire for grandchildren. She suffered from a split identity, intellectualized everything she could, and was driven relentlessly into excessive busyness to attain her self-defined goals which were actually substitutes for maternal instincts. While driven by desires to please God by performance, she was greatly distressed by an inhibiting back pain. Another 31-year-old single woman came for counsel. Her mother told her she had hated her while she was in the womb and had wanted to murder her. The, child, the girl grew up loathing herself and had tried to commit suicide. The mother later had a mental breakdown and was diagnosed as a schizophrenic. Rejection may be caused by the manner of birth. Experience has shown that rejection may commence 
in a child who is born very quickly and spends insufficient time in the birth canal to adjust to life outside the womb, sudden exposure to noise, bright lights, and being physically handled after the security, warmth, and relative quietness of the womb can be traumatic. If a child is born with instrumental assistance, causing head distortion or physical industry, is born after long and protracted labor in which the mother and baby have both become exhausted, is born by cesarean section, the lack of birth canal pressure sometimes causes these children to have dis difficulty in estimating distances between themselves and objects, resulting in frequent accidents, particularly head act injuries. Symptoms of rejection include a constant desire for physical love and assurance of self-worth. One of our grandsons suffered from these problems. Many mothers have confirmed the existence of such symptoms after hearing our testimony. A, a, a child can receive rejection. A baby not bonded to its mother soon after birth may receive a sense of rejected. An adopted child is always a rejected child. So any adopted child needs to go through ministry of deliverance from the demon of rejection. Rejected parents produce rejected children. This is hereditary rejection. Parents who have suffered from hereditary rejection or who have been rejected before marriage will be unable to share personal warmth with their children. Without doubt, they love their children, but because they have had no family example of love or feel emotionally bound, they are unable to express love physically. It is not uncommon to hear a parent say, we are not a, de a demonstrative family or we aren't the kissing or hugging types, which probably means we are embarrassed about any show of affection. So the children grow up rejected, insecure, and lacking in self-worth being, despite being surrounded by materialistic replace, replacements. Common causes of rejection when a person is young in the home can be, can be these. We have, we have all the way from A to Z. Being born with the sex opposite to what the parents desired a birth deformity or physical disability caused by an accident of disease which limits mobility or prevents participation in sports activities. Constant criticism by parents, siblings, or authority figures such as day school or Sunday school teachers. Unjust discipline, particularly if another family member appears to be favored. Being called names, which emphasize embarrassing personal features, such as four eyes. A sick or inc uh, incapacitated brother or sister receiving prolonged medical care and attention. Fathers showing weakness, apathy, or passivity in their authority and responsibility roles. Subjection to sexual molestation or incest. A father becoming sexually aggressive to his wife in the presence of his children. A spoiled or pampered child will end up feeling rejected. Children who belong to a racial minority will usually feel rejected by the majority amongst whom they live and play. Speech difficulties caused by uh, cleft palate, stuttering, stammering, lisping, or an inability to pronounce certain consonants or words will cause the speaker to feel embarrassed and rejected. Unhappy parents who argue, fight, won't talk to each other, or only speak through their children. The children feel guilty and responsible. Parental cruelty, alcoholism in one or both parents, failure to be forgiven or trusted by the parents, bribes or threats to be academically successful, being expelled from school or rejected by a peer group, embarrassed over the parents' religious beliefs, a father showing more attention to his daughter's girlfriends than he does to his own daughter. The destruction of the family home by fire or some natural disaster. A family member convicted for a serious crime. A sudden drop in the family standard of living caused by the unemployment, redundancy, or bankruptcy of the breadwinner. Parents having ample financial resources showing meanness toward their children, causing them to feel ashamed before their playmates. Children being constantly left to their own resources, either because of the working hours of their parents or the dis disinterest in their children's welfare. 
And then finally, parents showing no active interest in the progress of their children's schoolwork, sports activities, or leisure time pursuits. These are all doorways for the demon of rejection to come into a child. And that opens the door for many other spirits to come in. And so we, we must be able to identify the causes of rejection and, of course, to be able to minister and come against the demons of rejection, fear of rejection, self-rejection, hereditary rejection, deal with the roots of rejection, deal with the spirits that come in uh, uh, with rejection, uh, hurt, uh, anger, bitterness, rage. Uh, all of these things can be demons that torment a person's life. And Jesus does not want you to be tormented. He wants you to be set free. And that's why we spend so much time teaching primarily on the subject of deliverance because so many people need deliverance from these demons of rejection and the other demons that accompany the demon of rejection. And it's our responsibility as preachers, as men and women of God, to bring deliverance to those that we minister to. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach deliverance to the captives. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to those that are bound. And, and it's our responsibility to do that. And so I want to give you a chance again to, to uh, write us and get your copy of, of the manual on rejection. Don't forget to get your copy of the warfare prayer booklet that we're offering called Prayers That Route Demons. We're going to be praying some more of these prayers in the next program. I know that you'll be blessed by the teachings and by the information, by the prayers and by the revelation. And tune us in again the same time next week. Encourage your friend, an, another a neighbor, another saint of God to tune us in for Perfecting the Saints. I am John Eckhart, the pastor of Crusaders Church of Chicago. If you're ever in the Chicago area, feel free to visit us. We have powerful praise and worship, prophetic ministry, apostolic ministry, deliverance ministry. We believe that God will bless you. And as always in departing, this is John Eckhart saying unto you, until you hear from me again, may God bless you and keep you as always my prayer.